just one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Check, my check. Good. I'm going through the uh, mental Rolodex. We were playing Simon Says. I was too young to be kissing. I think it was like Simon Says lay on the floor, and I laid next to him, and I kissed him. All of a sudden, she comes in. Mwah. And it was quick. Her name was Malia. Maybe I shouldn't say her name, because she'd be like, what? Oh, uh, it's not my favorite memory. <laughs> really wanted the Nike Air Max. I saw the Jordan 4s. I've always like wanted Jordans. 4s. It was just like a heavenly light shined around them. I wore those to school until they was toe up. <laughs> Multicolored Converse high tops. We didn't have enough money to get some Chuck Taylors, so my mother decided to go to like the, literally the grocery store. And there would be like a bin of shoes, like knockoffs. When I tell you the soles of those shoes were, were hard plastic, I, I got on that basketball court, I would try to stop, and all you would hear was Like season one, season two of The Shine, like just that short hair, oh my God. It was like a mohawk, fishtail type of style. I just took it right down the next day. I shaved off the sides. I washed these braids and they all just sort of came out. I think I've loved all of my hairstyles. I follow my friends into the perm world and we texturize our hair so that we can have, you know, smacking curls. I decided to get finger waves. Like the women in the 20s had finger waves, right? <laughs> I'll never do that again. Leave the perm alone. The first hard conversation I had about racism was probably telling my daughter. She asked me what a slave was. He so happened to be white, and he also so happened to be gay. And we got in this conversation about the equivalent of the harassment that he was feeling and going through, and segregation and racism, and how they were the same. We weren't listening to each other. I was just having a conversation with my father the other day. He was like, listen, I never really had to talk to you about racism. You knew at a young age. Telling a six-year-old what that is, is is pretty difficult. It was actually more recent uh, around George, George Floyd's death. My first experience with the police was probably about two or three years ago. It was my friend's birthday, and we were chilling at a park and we got a noise complaint. We were coming from um, my grandma's house. The cop just pulled us over for no reason. And I saw the the lights go off and so I pulled over. You know, you've seen everything on the news. You're just like, oh Lord, if I make the wrong move, they might think I have a gun or they might just scream that I got a gun and I don't. We got stopped, got pulled out in front of school. Um, the man asked us to place our hands on the hood I remember being told not to move. I literally started getting everything out on it, like putting it on the dashboard, put my put my wallet on the dashboard, and I put my I put my hands on the on the steering wheel. And it's like, what is wrong with you? You saw you saw me following you. I followed you for two miles. You didn't stop, and he's just like going off, and I'm scared out of my mind. It's summertime in New Orleans, it's extremely hot. Everything is hot, so especially a, a car hood engine has just been running. It's extremely hot for a kid to put his hands, keep his hands on the hood. My body shook all the way home because a lot of people don't make it out of that situation and it's just scary. The protest showed me what could really bring people together. I was like, dang, I want to influence people to change yourself. That's why I act. Sometimes when I'm down and I'm seeing stuff that's happening, I just remember the Million Man March. It made me feel like I belong to a, a bigger organization, a bigger group of, of, of humanity. It's always something to be proud of, to see Black Panther, to see the, the impact that it had on all children. I felt empowered, you know, I felt like, wow, you know, we can actually be in superhero movies. The advice I give to the next generation, work hard to work harder. Know that you are valuable because there are so many people that are going to tell you you are not. You can do anything you want to do, no matter what anybody says. They'll try to bring you down because they can't get, do what you're doing, have what you have. Stick to it and continue to do the work. Don't let nobody tell you a plan B because you think a plan B, you're going to fail plan A. You are enough. You're not too much. You're not not enough. You are enough. We are all one. We are all one. We are all one. Love is the answer.